Right, uh, hello there everybody, George here, and I uh, hope you're all well. Now, um, I've been getting a few emails lately asking about connecting your audio gear to your radio um, in regard to using the DI box to get the levels right. So, I thought I'd do a video uh, to address that, and... Uh, I'm going to do a few videos in the future about the setup of audio stuff. So, um, we're going to start off here with just like a little diagram uh, first. So, let's just say um, we'll keep it simple. You're using um, the likes of a DVX preamp and Here's the radio. And here is our DI box. Now, um, I've done a video on a DI box before. I'll put a, I'll put a card up here to that. And uh, you can have a look at that. But very basically what a DI box does um, what they're intended for is to connect an unbalanced signal and convert it to a balanced signal so you're using say a guitar or uh, a keyboard or a bass guitar or something like that and you wanted to plug it directly into a mixing console so the input of the di box is unbalanced right and the output of the di box is balanced okay <laughs> so that just creates a little bit of a a thing we have to do and uh, nothing major but uh, we're going to cover that in this video so here's our microphone whatever it may be um, condenser uh, or um, a dynamic whatever so we have our XLR lead which comes from that into the DI or into the, the DBX so this is balanced okay so meaning with the XLR that all three pins are used so if you're not familiar with an XLR cable, you have three connections. They're marked on the black plastic here. One, two, and three. Pin one here is the ground. Okay. Pin two, that's the hot or audio plus. And pin three is the cold or audio minus. It, it varies on different uh, sources of information you'd be looking about this stuff whether they call it audio minus or, or ground or cold or whatever so um, that's the XLR plug so we have one that goes into the back of the microphone and we have another one that goes into the back of the uh, your preamp so the one here will be a female one like this and the one that goes in here will be male meaning you can see the pins that stick into the back of that so that's fine so the output in the case of a dbx it's a quarter inch and we come out there now here's where we start to get a little bit complex now here this plug will be a trs tip ring and sleeve meaning that it is balanced coming out here okay so when we get to this end here, where it plugs into the DI box, this will be a TS plug, tip and sleeve. Now, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, both of them work. I've tried both of them. So whichever way you're the most comfortable with doing, that's fine. What you can do is you can either tie the, uh, the braid and the uh, audio minus or the, the, the cold audio minus cold 
you can tie the two rows together meaning twist the two rows wires together and solder them as one and you'll connect those so here's our plug all right crude drawn now there's the little black thing so this is the tip and this is the sleeve the tip connection is here and the sleeve connection is is this here right so what you do is you will solder your audio plus here or hot whichever you want to call it and your audio minus or cold will go here okay so what that does is it unbalances the signal going in to the di box which is what the input of the di box should be okay now given what we said about the di box um it converts an unbalanced signal to um so input is unbalanced it converts an unbalanced signal to a balanced signal okay right so there's a couple of handy ways to to do this and uh, there's our mic jack on the front of the radio now uh, the connection on most of these uh, di boxes will be a female xlr like this lad here okay so like before when you're looking at these connectors when you're talking about soldering wires onto them you want to be looking at the cable we'll say in this direction or the plug if you if you understand me when you're looking at the three pins and they're numbered on the back when you take it apart i'll just take this asunder now and i'll show you what i'm on about when you take this apart this is where you're going to be soldering on here the pins are numbered in here as well one two and three so that's the that's the dimension you want to be looking at these in okay you want to be looking at them that way so here's one which is uh the ground then we have uh pin two which is the hot and that's ground and then we have pin three which is audio minus or cold whichever you want to call it okay so what we need to do here is these two pins have to be linked together and then your cable that's going to come out of the back of your xlr go onto your radio yeah you're going to have because if you're using the same type star quad cable where you have two blue wires two white wires and a braid what you do is uh, i always use the white for the hot the blue for the cold and then you have the the, the braid for the, the the ground so what you're going to do is you're going to tie the blue and the braid together and so i put a solder them and then you're going to attach those here to pin three so the link then you can just link it with a bit of wire or if you leave the the braid kind of long enough you just kind of solder across those two pins like that from here to here and that unbalances your signal coming out okay uh, i'll put a link in the description of this video to a document from uh, the rain corporation it's all about uh, audio interconnections and how to terminate them and stuff like that it's quite handy i've uh, linked it before it's very good so right we have this done now our plug here that's sorted out so we're going to come over here we have a cable now on most radios there's two ways you can feed audio in you can go in through the front eight pin uh, or six pin or seven pin or whatever it may be and you might have an rca on the back which will say line in or audio in or whatever uh, and on some of the older radios you can feed it in through one of the the din connectors for the uh, for data you can feed audio in that way 
So, in the case of the front mic uh, socket, you, you'll have one of them adapters where it's a pin going into the radio, and then there's two wires coming out with two sockets. And you'll have one for PTT, and you'll have one for uh, your mic. Okay. So what you need to do here, um, if you're going in this way, you will put whatever type of plug this is, whether it's uh, 3.5 mil or quarter inch, which is 6.4 mil, whatever, will uh, go on for the microphone here. And you will just use, let's just, right, so you will just use at this plug end here, at this plug here, you will have your, this will be a TS, same as this one here. So you'll connect your white lead to there and you'll connect just the blue lead here. You don't need to connect the braid because it's it's unbalanced up here. So you don't need to connect the braid here. You can if you wish. It will work either way. So you don't have to, to do that um, if you don't want to. But it doesn't matter if you do. Now, if you're going to go around the back here, and you'll use an RCA, uh, which is, you know, the little roundy lad with the pin. Uh, hang on, I will draw it this way. Right. So you have, uh, on the back of that, you'll have, you have the little tab here for the hot, and then this bit with the cable clamp and all that on it, that's the ground. So you'll put your uh, white wire here, and then you put your blue and braid, or just the blue here. Right, and then you can plug into the back. Now, so that takes care of your signal is fully balanced from the microphone to the preamp. And just preamp there. Okay, and then you're fully balanced coming out of the preamp heading towards the DI box. You're going to unbalance that on the input of the DI box. We want to do our little trick here with the XLR with pin one and three to unbalance it again, coming out of the DI box. And then we're going to head to the radio and we're going to either go in the front socket or we're going to go in the rear socket with the RCA on it, which is this lad up here. Okay. Now, the thing that you're going to be using the DI box for, it's going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to take care of the audio level. We'll talk about that now. If you were to, um, we'll say, not use the DI box and just have this unbalanced input here, connected in here or into the back, you're going to find that your audio is going to be distorted. Even with everything turned down to the last, your ALC is going to be off the scale, right? The reason for that being is that professional audio gear, like the DBX or any of the other stuff that you might be using in your system, is line level. And the input to your radio um, is a mic level. There's very few radios that will handle a line level input okay so 95 percent of the time you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to do what's called you're going to have to pad the audio level okay so what that means is here's our line level audio here and here's our mic level audio here we're going to step it down to a level that the radio is happy to see, okay? And in the case of the DI box I have, which is the Behringer GI100, it's got two buttons on the side here, and they are 20 dB pads, minus 20 dB. So when you press one of those buttons, it steps the audio down by 20 dB, and if you press the two of them, it steps the audio down by 40 dB. Okay. Now, in my case, I only have one pressed in. 
and the 7300 operates quite nicely um, with nice ALC deflection I have tried it I've pressed in the two of them to see and it's it's just too much so the 20 db is is perfect okay um right so that's stepping down the audio level that the radio is happy to see the second thing that your di box is going to do uh, and it's one of the main reasons i use it is for isolation okay let's just say you have a complex rack arrangement like what i've got or a four rack units in it one two three four they're all interconnected everything's balanced there's loads of plugs and loads of wires and all that kind of carry on um particularly if you're using an amp you might have some stray rf floating around in your shack or a bit of rf coming back in around your feed line or something like that so what the isolation end of it is going to do the di box has two transformers in it there's one on the input and one on the output so what's going to happen here is your audio line the, the di box is going to be the last thing before it goes into the radio so the isolation part of it what's going to happen is the radio is galvanically isolated from everything else so if any rf is going to be picked up on any of these cables right the di box is not going to let that uh, RF pass and get into the radio right so basically in layman's terms you have a connection like that and then we have transformer and uh, that's probably not the right well you know the transformer thing and then it goes on to the radio so the audio signal passes through the transformer uh, through induction but if there's any RF or anything like that on the signal, it's not going to make its way into the radio and distort your audio. All right. So that's basically how you set it up and why you have to set it up that way. Um, I'm going to do another video now after this to show how to make the lead that goes from here to the radio. Right. Because I um, have to make one of those for somebody in the UK. So we'll cover that in the next video. So um, i leave it there for this video. A bit long, but look, to explain this stuff, lads, it, 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 that's how long these videos take, I'm afraid. So um, if anybody has any questions, uh, you can um, drop it in the comments down below or you can uh, send me an email. I'll put my email address on the screen right now and uh, you can send me an email. But I'm getting quite a few emails about this lately um people asking me oh how do you connect this up and you know there, there's people asking me about using the di box and this and that and the other and then a week or two later i get an email from them again telling me oh yeah i i have this set up but my audio is distorted and i ask about the di box oh i didn't bother with that you, you have to okay it's that's just the long and short of it you have to to step the audio level down yeah or if you want to go the mega expensive route you can buy one of those uh, w2 ihy uh, he calls it an i box right which is basically same thing i i got my hands on a circuit diagram of one of them and it's the same thing as a di box only the only difference is he has a a, a variable uh a variable uh, potentiometer on it that you can adjust the audio level like which is stupid because you either need line level or you need mic level there's no in between so and i don't know them things are expensive these are only 20 odd quid so um now there's another thing um somebody was on to me uh, i think it was morris yeah morris over there in in the uk and he he was using um he was having a bit of trouble but his di box is a passive one um mine is active meaning that it has a, a nine volt supply going to it all the time and um i don't know is a passive di box the way to go um anybody that asks me about it i tell them to get this particular one so um there you go that is how you connect all that up 
and um, they get simple enough uh, solder and this stuff together um, it's not very complicated so there you have it so we'll get you in the next video where we're going to make this lead here with the XLR and in the case of the one I'm making it's going to have a quarter inch um, TS plug on for the uh, this type of adapter here so I'll leave it there for this video and we'll get you in the next one this is George all the best